Hello and welcome to another ZBrush for iPad getting started tutorial. So picking up where we left off in the previous video where we talked about poly painting and materials, we're going to talk about lights and rendering. So to start off, I've mentioned that you can change the direction of this light only if you're using a standard material. But if you change this direction of the light, it's going to cast you some shadows and you can add more lights to this. So you can have, for example, a light that's like this harsh. Then you can come over here and select these slots. So in this case, if I want this rim light, I double tap this. And now I'm basically adding a second light to my scene. You can see if I tap that sphere, it's going to change from being cast from the back to being cast from the front. So if I lower this intensity, this is just a regular shaped light, like a fill light, for example, it could be this very subtle fill light. And then you can add like an actual rim light. So now I want this light to be on the back and I want this to be like super close and I want this to be more intense and maybe something like that. So if I change this direction, you can see it's giving me that rim effect. So I could come over here, maybe do like a very subtle purplish color. And now we have these three lights set up. It's a three point lighting system. In order for me to render this, I have to press this little button called BPR. So if I click here, it's going to give me some shadows. Now you can say, OK, but these shadows are way too harsh. They're not natural at all. And I need to change how the shadows and the lights behave. First and foremost, I want to dock both the light palette and the render palette together since I'm going to access them all the time. As mentioned before, you can tap these little buttons on the top of any palette and drag it over. Now we have a secondary little bar that we can just move across our screen. So I want this little bar to have the light palette and I can come over here to these three dots and add another palette. And I want to add the render palette. So now I can just move this to the side, for example. And as I tap that, it's going to give me that render settings palette. So if I click BPR, let's check what's happening. By the way, the cast shadows that you see on the floor are there because you have floor grid turned on. So if you turn off floor grid and now render, there won't be any floor shadows. But let's turn that back on just for now. So if we go over to our render tab, we can turn on and off the shadows or ambient occlusion. And then if you turn ambient occlusion on and press render again, now it's going to calculate that ambient occlusion. It's going to give me a more natural look. Now to change the shadow settings, you have to go to BPR shadow. Anytime you see an F or G, F is floor and G is a global shadow. So if I turn down this F strength and then click render, you can see the floor shadow is gone or almost gone. So I want that floor shadow to be strong. I want this global shadow to be maybe a little softer. So I want to tone it down a little bit. So if I add rays, it's basically controlling the amount of rays it's calculating. But if I have an angle, the angle is basically the penumbra of the shadow. So if you've worked with photography and light boxes and you have those little hinges on the side, that's what the angle is controlling. So you're basically increasing the penumbra. So if I raise this value and then press PPR, it's going to give me a softer shadow. Now, it's not that evident. I'm going to crank this up to like 16 and now you can see it's softening out that shadow. So now the amount of rays, if I just have one ray, you're going to see that quality of the transition of the shadow. And you can see down here on the neck, it's not going to be great. So I need to raise those rays to like 100. And now you're going to see you have like softer global shadows. So let me raise this a little bit more. Now, the resolution is just a shadow resolution. So if I crank this down and then press render, the quality of the shadow itself is not going to be Great. You can see some artifacts over there when there's multiple lights, for example, interacting with it. If I do a blur, it's just going to blur the shadows overall. 
If you go to BPRAO, it's going to tweak your ambient occlusion settings. So there's floor ambient occlusion and global ambient occlusion. And we have similar settings as the BPR shadows, such as angle, rays, resolution, and blur. And there's so many options here for you to explore how to tweak your render settings and mix and match that with material settings. And you can get pretty cool and interesting results. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.